mind. What our journey really looks like. Let me go contextually. This is second, we've been in second Corinthians 10. Let's go back to first Corinthians one. I want to share this with you because this to me is Paul's message of what this really looks like. And this is his way of saying, remember we were in second Corinthians 10. That's way up there. Rewind to 1 Corinthians 1. This is one of his first things he says to the Corinthian church. And this is Paul trying to describe what salvation really looks like. 1 Corinthians 1.18. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. What an admission. You tell people about the cross that don't care? That's stupid. It's foolish to talk about God died 2,000 years ago in the Roman Empire. What good is that going to do me? So that, Paul knew that. And he was in that generation. He's going, trust me, we don't follow people down on crosses. People down on crosses are criminals. They're losers. So you know, it's going to be a hard time winning people to Jesus if all we got is the cross. He goes, it's foolish as people are perishing. But to those of us who are being saved, the cross is a whole different message. Because if I've actually met Christ in, in here, then the cross isn't a piece of wood with a dude dying that probably deserved to die. The cross becomes the place I die. The cross becomes where everything about me dies. The cross becomes the prelude to an empty tomb. Empty tombs mean I get to live again. The cross becomes my transition point. The cross becomes my rejoicing. I'm not embarrassed of the cross. I celebrate the cross. It's not foolishness to me. I'm being saved. See, I'm not all the way there, but I'm on my way there. And part of what I'm on my way to is living out of this place of a revelation in the heart to those of us being saved, not to those of us who are saved, but to those of us who are on the journey. We're working this out. The cross means something to me because it's written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning. I will thwart 20. Where is the one who is wise? Where's the scribe? Where's the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Because since in the wisdom of God, the world didn't know God through wisdom because you can't. You will not meet God through wisdom. In the wisdom of the world, the world did not know God. You can't apologetics your way into proving God. If you think Christianity is going to be based on you figuring stuff out up here, give up. We don't figure stuff out up here. We start in here and we let this infiltrate every other area of our life. If since in the wisdom of God, the world didn't know God through wisdom, God decided that through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. So look at that. Through the foolishness of preaching what? The foolishness of the cross. So the foolishness of actually telling people that Jesus died on their behalf. That's the basis of our faith. That's the hope. I had a young man ask me this week, um, don't you think it's possible that Christianity is just the crutch of people who are suffering. And I said, I would counter by asking you to consider that life itself is suffering. So what better option do you have than to make meaning out of your life by watching the ultimate sufferer? If you're going to suffer anyway, wouldn't it mean something if you had a template by which to suffer? And I'm not trying to intellectualize this young man into he's already a believer, but he's asking good questions. So I thought if life is suffering and if you don't think it is, you haven't lived long enough. If life is suffering, I don't mean every second of life, but life is suffering. It's part of it. And if it isn't now, you will say goodbye to someone you love and then tell me if life is suffering. And so whatever you suffer, however you suffer, you can call Christianity a crutch if you'd like. Paul said, fine, that's the mental acumen of those who look at the cross as foolishness and everyone that follows it's a fool because you are all in need of a crutch. Great, but for those of us being saved in our suffering, to see someone suffer on our behalf becomes the template by which we pick up the cross and follow Jesus into the worst hell we can find because we're going to be in that hell anyway and it sure would be nice to, to know that someone rolled the stone away on the other side and that if he came out, I can come out. If that's a crutch... Grab it. 
That's 1 Corinthians 1. That's Paul saying, that's what the cross stands in front of you as. It can be the place where a, a fool died 2,000 years ago outside of, of Jerusalem, if you'd like, and you can intellectually be brilliant. Or it can be the place where you die. And you see in him your death. And what do you know is coming? Tomorrow. And a stone rolling away. And a resurrection. And that is where my heart meets my Savior. And that's why we follow Jesus. You don't get it all figured out intellectually? It's okay. You don't ever have to have it all figured out. You don't have to, you don't have to then but, but treat education as if it's an enemy. It's not an enemy to be educated. It's not an enemy to learn. In fact, the more you learn, the more you might ask better questions. It's also a good place to be where the questions get a little more intense about your relationship, about who you are.